Hello everybody, good morning to you. Hopefully you are all doing well. As we wait for everyone to start trickling in. Good morning, Angelo. Good morning, Olivia. <clears throat> Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Tristan. Morning, Christian. Good morning, Christian. Well, oh, Christian C and Christian O, both of them. We're still waiting for a lot of people to show up. I don't know why we're missing so many people today. Yeah, go ahead, print the uh, application sheets. <clears throat> Today's going to be application questions uh, and stuff like that. So in around three minutes, I'll start with uh, some announcements um, for plans for this unit. Uh, and then we're going to keep going from there.
but I do hope that most people who can't tune in right now are watching the videos later. Uh, what I forgot to do is add these videos to the playlist, and now I'm going to have to do that. see if I can do that right now as we wait for more people to trickle in. Good morning, Antoinette. There we go, that's updated there. Uh, so for those who uh, don't know or haven't realized, um, there is a playlist now. Instead of me posting uh, each individual video link um, to, uh, to the Google Classroom, instead I've actually just created a YouTube playlist uh, you can go into that link and it should have every video listed in order from when we started all the way to now. Uh, even this current live stream should be up there too. Um, if I'm missing videos, once again, just let me know, comment uh, on an announcement post that I've made. And then uh, I'll get that fixed as soon as possible. I'm hoping to have all of your marks updated by uh, early May, early May, hopefully, with your tests and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we'll we'll have to see uh, what's gonna happen with that. Okay, it's eleven oh six. Uh, let's start off with some announcements. Announcement number one. Um, once again, what's the playlist, YouTube playlist? Uh, so please access that in case uh, you you know need to go back to some videos. You want to rewatch some of uh, my uh, some of my um, previous videos and lessons. Please feel free to do that. Announcement number two: Tomorrow is office hours. Um, we're gonna. I'm basically gonna be open uh, only until people like show up. Only for people who show up. If you don't show up. Uh, I'm just going to end the office out early and that's it. That's how it always goes. So if you have questions on application problems, solving by graphing, solving by substitution, solving by elimination, please come to the office hours tomorrow uh, and we'll get that sorted out and clarify any questions uh, that you might have. Um, third, your test, your test. Okay. What I'm going to be doing for your test. Today is technically the final lesson um, for this unit. So today is the final lesson for this unit. What that means is that on Thursday, uh, I am going to have a short stream. Um, but it, it's not going to be too long. But mainly I'm going to tell you that, hey, you have a final assignment, unit assignment uploaded. It's going to be a practice test. Okay. And what it basically is, so that practice test is just an assignment for you to complete all until Monday. So you're going to have Thursday, you're going to have Friday, you're going to have Saturday, you're going to have Sunday, and you're going to hand it in on Monday. Okay. Monday, we actually start our new unit. That's the goal. So you're going to hand in this practice test on the Monday. And yes, you are allowed to use all your notes. You're allowed to use whatever you need to. Okay. So you, it's open book. You finish the practice test, you hand it, you take a picture of what you, you wrote down and then you hand it in. So once again, if you can't print it, you're going to have to copy the questions down onto a piece of paper and then solve it. That's the only option you have. So same way, you're going to take a picture, you're going to upload it to Google Classroom and then you're going to hand it in like that. Okay. So once again, I'll put, uh, I'll give instructions and stuff like that again on the Thursday, but today is the final lesson for this unit. So we're done. 
we're done this unit and we move on to the next unit right after okay uh, good morning Ashton good morning Amir yes uh, please print if your printer ran, ran out of ink then you're just gonna have to do it the tough way of uh, just copying down on a piece of paper it's gonna suck because today is word problems but I mean with word problems all you really need to worry about is the uh, the equations anyways so it won't be too big of a deal okay let's get started with our lesson today so word problems application problems whoa okay let's talk about it so let's look at question one here even I have to copy down the equations later okay um, actually let me take out a piece of paper here before we get started Okay, so after ticket sales at a volleyball game, a cash box contains 87 coins in loonies and toonies. If the total value of the money is $161, how many of each kind of coin is there? The situation can be represented by the following system of equations. L plus T equals 87. L plus 2T equals 161 where L represents the number of loonies and T represents the number of toonies. So A, solve the system of equations by substitution or elimination. B, how many loonies are there in the cash box? And C, how many toonies are there in the cash box? So L represents loonies, T represents toonies. So if we want to figure that out, well, we have to solve it. We have to find the point of intersection. So it's asking us to solve it using substitution or elimination. So if you're writing on a piece of paper, essentially you're going to be doing what I'm doing. So for 1A, let's first copy the two equations down. We have L plus T is equal to 87. Okay, so that's our first equation. Then we have L plus 2T equals 161. Okay. So we have our two equations here. Once you have that down, we have to solve it. So we can kind of just ignore uh, the question there. And we can just focus on solving this linear system. So if I ask um, the group here, let's use our straw poll. Right? So those who have access uh, to the YouTube chat, Let's uh, vote here on this link. Okay, should I use substitution or elimination? Okay, and if you can't vote on it, just type it in the chat, and then I'll look at the majority uh, vote. Okay, so decide: Do I use for this question? Should I solve it using substitution or elimination? Gonna give you another uh, 10 seconds here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, so in total, we got 10 votes in uh, for now. Uh, and so we have well, actually, it's a, it's seven votes for elimination, and including uh, the people who typed in chat, uh, it would be seven to five. So seven votes for elimination, five votes for substitution. Now, it's true. Once again, I'm only asking because it's your choice. You don't have to do it in one way, uh, just one way. Okay. So, if you chose substitution, you can do substitution. That's up to you. Um, but if I'm if you're asking me as to what I would pick in this situation, uh, I would have to go with the majority where it's elimination. And the reason for that, the reason why I would choose elimination here, right, 
is because, well, we have everything lined up. L is over L, T is over T, and the number is over the number, equal is over equals. And the second thing is that you'll see that the coefficient for L is exactly the same. The coefficient is one for both. So that way, elimination, I can just draw the long line here and then just get started. I don't have to do the extra work of isolation. Now, if you chose substitution, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that substitution is wrong. You can still solve it using substitution. You will still get the same answer. Okay. So you pick, if you pick substitution, I highly suggest going for that because you find that's easier than do that method, right? Some people might find elimination easier. Some people might find substitution easier. So pick your method. So for me personally, I will go elimination. If you chose substitution, please try substitution and maybe we can check our answer at the end and see if we get the same answer. Okay. So when we solve this, 1 minus 1 gives me 0, so there's going to be nothing there. 1 minus positive 2 gives me negative 1t. And that equals 87 minus 161 which gives me negative 74. Okay, I get negative 74. I have to get rid of my negative 1. I'm going to divide by negative 1. And that's going to give me t is equal to 74. Okay, t is equal to 74. So there it is. That's our, uh, that's our T. So now we have to solve for L. So to solve for L, I'm going to sub T equals 74 into this first equation here. Okay. So in other words, I'm going to get L plus 74 is equal to 87. And now we can solve using algebra or 74 moves to the other side, I'm going to get L is equal to 87 minus 74. And so L is equal to 13. And so we would assume our point of intersection would be 1374. Okay, well, let's check our answer. We should probably check, are we right? So let's check. So let's check. We have our first equation, L plus T equals 87. So L is 13, T is 74. And so that definitely makes 87. We have our left side equals right side. Our second one here is L plus 2T equals 161. L is 13, T is 74. So 13 plus 2 times 74 is 148. And when we add these two together, I get 161 is equal to 161, which means left side equals right side. Okay. So that means our two answers of t equals 74 and l equals 13 would be correct answers. That's very good. Perfect. So Angelo is saying also confirming that L equals 13, T equals 74. Very, very good. Okay. So that would be 1A. Okay. So we have our answer. This is the full solution. I can't zoom out more. So uh, let me see if I can just raise it a little higher so you can see the whole thing. So, okay. Right. So we have our full solution here. This is using elimination for this question. Uh, once again, you pick whether you want elimination or substitution. It does not matter. Uh, but there's our first answer. Okay, there's your first answer. So that's for 1A. 1B, you'll see at the very top here. How many loonies are in the cash box? Well, we write our statement for that. And see how many toonies are in the cash box? We write our statement for that. So for uh, how many loonies are there? Right? So for B, how many loonies? There are 13 loonies in the cash 
box. Okay, so there's that. And for C, how many toonies? There are 74 toonies in the cash box. Okay, full sentences. Why? Because it's a word problem. If it is a word problem, if I ask you a question and you are a decent human being, you would respond with a sentence, right? And of course, you can make the argument, just say the number, it's faster. I get it. But let's practice, you know, responding and using our English that we all know to answer the question with full sentences. Okay? So there's question one. Did anyone find that too difficult? Because, well, you'll notice, well, it's not too bad, Mr. Choi. Like, um, your answer or answering this is just exactly what we've done before. And yes, you're right. This is exactly what we've done before. The question wasn't too difficult. So with word problems, what makes it really hard is when I don't give you the equations right that's when it becomes really hard so for you'll notice for these questions all of them that are on that page the equations are given to you okay so let's look at another question and then we'll go uh, in a little more detail there okay so let's look at question two here so it says here, a bank teller has a total of 124 bills in fives and tens. The total value of money is 840. The equations represent this situation. The total number of bills, x plus y equals 124. The total value is 5x plus 10y equals 840. Okay. X represents the number of $5 bills and Y represents the number of $10 bills. So once again, A, solve the system using substitution or elimination and B, how many $5 bills does the bank teller have and C, how many $10 bills does the bank teller have? Okay, so let's go through uh, our situation again. Should I use substitution or elimination for this question? Substitution or elimination. Just type it in the chat this time. S for substitution, E for elimination. That way it'll be quick than uh, the survey. So S for substitution, E for elimination. Okay. Which method should I use? Or which one's easier in, the, in our situation? I'm getting a lot of E's, a couple S's. Okay. Once again, there's no correct answer. Both methods work. One's easier than the other, though. Okay. So I think that's most people uh, commenting. For this question, I personally would go for substitution. That would be my method. Okay. I would go for substitution. All right. If you chose elimination, I will also show you how to set it up for this question. Okay. But let's talk about the substitution method first. Okay. So for substitution, let's copy down our equations here. We have x plus y equals 124 and 5x plus 10y equals 840. Okay. The reason why I would choose substitution here 
is although all of it is lined up, x is with x, y is with y, equals with equal, number with number, <clears throat> although it's lined up correctly, the issue that I have with it is that the coefficients are not the same. One has one, the other has five. One has one, the other has ten. So if I want to eliminate anything, I have to do an extra step of making them equal. So instead, if I do substitution and I rearrange question, equation one for x or y, I'll do x in this case, then I can immediately just change it to my substitution method here. And then I can sub three into two and I can just get started like that. Okay. Four, if we did elimination here. So let me recopy this equation here before I continue solving. I need to change this equation. Okay. Uh, if I want to use elimination, the goal is to make sure one of my variables has the same coefficient in the second equation as well. In our situation here, none of the coefficients are the same. So what I can do here, I can say I'll multiply by 5. Okay, so if I multiply by 5, what I'm going to get, 1 times 5 is 5x. Then 1 times 5 is also 5y. And then 124 times 5 is 620. So there's my changed equation. And the second equation I can just copy down. So this is what we talked about yesterday. At the very end of class, we talked about we can use elimination to solve this, this question, right? Even if the coefficients don't match, you can change them by multiplying the whole equation to make them match. And so now I can solve it using elimination. Okay. So both methods, once again, work. I would personally choose substitution because there's less setup work involved and less chance of a mistake. Okay. So I'm going to continue solving with substitution. If you want to solve using elimination here, please go ahead. Let's check our work at the end. Okay. So let me continue solving it using substitution. So I'm just going to end it here for elimination here. So I'm going to sub equation three into equation two. So it's going to be five instead of X. I'm going to write 124 minus Y plus 10 Y equals 840. And then we're going to keep going here. So 5 times 124 is 620. 5 times negative y is negative 5y plus 10y equals 840. I'm going to keep going. Combining like terms here, negative 5y plus 10y. So 620 plus 5y equals 840. Okay. So now we've substituted now we have to solve for y if we solve for y we're going to move the 620 to the other side i'm going to get 5y equals 840 minus 620 and that's going to give me 5y is equal to 220 and i can finish solving that by dividing by 5 and what's that going to give me? That's going to give me 44 for y. Okay, that's going to give me 44. So there's our first answer. So now we have to find x since we need the point of intersection. We need x. So now we're going to take the y. We're going to sub y equals 44 into equation 1. So equation one, I'll copy it down, was x plus y equals 124. We're going to replace y with 44. So x plus 44 is equal to 124.
to solve for x, very simple. We just move the 44 to the other side. x is going to be equal to 124 minus 44. And what does that give me? That gives me 80. Okay. And so we have our two answers here. And let's check them. So let's check our work. Okay. So for checking, we have our first equation, x plus y is equal to 124. We set x is 80, y is 44. So that definitely makes 124. So left side equals right side. So we have our first check there. Our second check, I'm going to zoom out a little bit to get a little more space. We have our second equation, 5x plus 10y is equal to 840. Okay, so we said x is 80, we said y is 44. And so that's going to give me 5 times 80 is 400. 10 times 44 is 440. Okay, and that should equal 840. And for those that are doing the math in their head, should immediately understand and see that 840 will equal 840. So we have our answer here. Okay. So there's our full solution. I can't really fit it all onto one page, but hopefully you guys can still see. Um, so we have here 840 equals 840, uh, left side equals right side. And so our answer would be X is 80, Y is 44. Okay, But we're not done just yet, right? We still have to write our statement for our next two questions. So this was question 2A. Okay. So if this was question 2A, let's continue by solving the rest. Okay. So hopefully you've taken a look and you've written this down. So 2A says here, how many $5 bills does the bank teller have? And C was how many $10 bills does the bank teller have? And remember, it tells us X represents $5 bills and Y represents $10 bills. So looking back at the question, it tells us which variable is which bill. Okay, so let's answer those questions. I'm going to change. I'm going to write it sideways because I've kind of run out of space here. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. So uh, let's talk, it's, I think it's uh, the bank teller. Yes, the bank teller, okay. The bank teller has $85 bills. So there's our first answer because we said X is 80. And for C, It's how many $10 bills. So the bank teller has 44 $10 bills. Okay. And there's our final answer to questions B and C. Okay. So that was question two, which means now it is your turn. I'm going to give you a word problem and I want you to answer fully questions A, B, and C. Okay. So let's zoom out and let's kind of pick a question here. Uh, let's pick, actually let's, let's vote. Let's vote. Let's, let's do a vote. Let's do a vote. We'll use our straw poll. I'll give you guys the choice of uh, picking.
So the poll is coming up here. Which question do you want to solve? Question three, question four, or question five? The votes are coming in. So right now we have a tie for question three and question five. We have a tie for question three and question five. So this is what we're gonna do. Oh, I think that might've broken the tie. Yes, question five is now the winner. So you are going to be solving question five. Okay. Question five is a little bit um, more difficult, which I prefer you guys doing. And the reason why it's more difficult, you'll see, is the questions are a little bit different. So it asks you, first, 5a, what does the each variable represent? So you'll notice in the question, it doesn't tell you what c means and what d means. So you should tell me, c represents this, and then d represents this, okay? Um, B is the same, solve using substitution or elimination. Uh, C, what does the point of intersection represent? Okay, so if you're writing in, in terms of, uh, here, if you are writing it in terms of C comma D, what does your answer represent? Okay, so we'll take C as our, our X and then D as our Y or something like that. Uh, and then which type of car is more economical for driving 3,000 kilometers, okay? So the questions are a little bit different. I'm going to give you a full 10 minutes to solve this question, and then we're going to take it up, and that'll be our lesson for today. So I'm going to put a 10-minute timer, all right? 10-minute timer, good luck. We'll take it up in 10 minutes. Use the notes if you have to, right? This is the time you can use your notes. Plus, for your practice test, I'm letting you use your notes anyways. So please get started on question five, and we'll meet you back in 10 minutes. Good luck.
So, hopefully you guys have solved at least the problem itself. Let's go through each situation here. <clears throat> okay, so it's asking us, okay, what does each variable represent, right? What is C and what is D? What does C stand for? What does D stand for? So C is what, right? So C in our case, right, would be the the total cost. <clears throat> C is the total cost. Very good. So if you wrote cost, that's very good. You got it right. Uh, D is the distance. Okay. So this is the answer to question A. 5a <clears throat> okay so d is distance right so we have those two there then we should uh, copy down the next two equations so let me copy it down first here real quick And then let me uh, put it in here and then we'll get started here. So once again, C is the total cost, D is the distance. And now I've copied down my uh, two equations to get 
solving. Okay, so my question to you would be, which method did you use? Does it matter? No. Which method would I use? <clears throat> I would use substitution here because it's already isolated. C is alone, which means we can just substitute it in. I can just say sub 1 into 2, and that will make my life easier. Now, if you did elimination, that's fine. Let's check our answer. You should get the same answer. So we continue. C is going to be my 0.90D, and that's going to equal 0.30D plus 2,000. 400. Now we get into this uh, issue where D is on both sides. So as a class before the break, we've all agreed that we like having our variable on the left. So I'm going to take this here. I'm going to move it to the left. And so that's going to give me 0.90 D minus 0.30. Oops. Equals 2400. Okay. So we have this equation now. We can still continue solving. 0.60D equals 2,400. And to get rid of 0.60, we just divide by 0.60. And that will give us a final answer of D is equal to 4,000. Okay, so D is equal to 4,000. So we've gotten our first variable here. So then we continue on. Sorry, didn't want to go that low. We're going to sub D equals 4,000 into equation 1. And so equation 1 was C equals 0.90D. And so when we plug it in here, 0.90 times 4,000, that's going to give me 3,600. Okay. So there's our two answers that we're looking for. D equals 4,000. C equals 3,600. If we check, let's check our work to make sure we are correct. Okay. So to check, our first equation was C equals 0 0.90D. So that's 3,600 equals 0 0.90D times 4,000, and that's going to give me the same answer. So left side equals right side. We're good there. Okay, so that's a check. Our second check is going to be C is equal to 0 0.30D plus 2,400. And so that's 3,600 is equal to 0 0.30 times 4,000 plus 2,400. <clears throat> and so when we solve that here, we're going to get 3,600 is equal to 1,200 plus 2,400. And we're going to see here that left side equals right side. And I'll leave it on the screen for a little bit for you to see. Okay. So I see Angelo and Christian C has posted their answers. C equals 3,600 and D equals 4,000. That is the correct answer. Okay, so that is correct. Very good job to those uh, that have completed it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, so with that being said, let's continue onwards. Okay. So checking our work here, we have our, uh, our things done. So let's continue on to our next question, part C. So part C was, what does the point of intersection represent? So our point of intersection was 3,600 comma, oh, sorry, yeah, 4,000, where we said C is equal to 3,600 and D is equal to 4,000. What does this represent, right? What does this mean in terms of the word problem? 
okay? This was a tough one. This is a tough question. Once again, when we're trying to understand what it means, when we compare two things, the point of intersection means that those two things are equivalent at that point. They're equal. They're exactly the same at that point. And what that means is for both cars, it costs $3,600, okay, if they travel 4,000 kilometers. That should be your full sentence, and that should make sense for you, okay? Because we've talked about cost and distance of an electric car versus a gas car here, we're basically saying at 4,000 kilometers, okay, at 4,000 kilometers for both cars, it's going to be the same cost, which means at 4,000, it doesn't matter which car you pick. It's going to be the same amount of cost, okay? So that's an important question that you need to understand and that you need to know how to answer. If you don't know how to answer this question, please, please, please review this video, review what I just said about understanding what the point of intersection means when you compare two things, okay? So now let's go to the last question. Which type of car is more economical for driving 3,000 kilometers? So what that's telling us here in our information for question D is that the D, the distance, is not 4,000. We're saying, what if the distance was 3,000, right? As written here, 3,000 kilometers. So we're saying D equals 3,000. Let's compare the two. So we'll separate it into two categories here. We'll do gas car and electric car. So for our gas car, we have our first equation, C equals 0.90D. So all it's asking you to do is plug in D as 3000. So let's solve that. Okay. And when we solve this, you should get 2700. So there's our gas car. For our electric car, We have 0.30D plus 2,400 as written in the question. So now let's plug it in. C is equal to 0.30 times 3,000 plus 2,400. So that would be C equals 900 plus 2,400 and C equals 3,300. So there's our two costs. So for the gas car, 3,000 kilometers costs $2,700. For an electric car, 3,000 kilometers costs $3,300. So which one it says is more economical? In other words, this is cheaper. Okay, which is cheaper? And so for us, we would pick, if we only drove up to 3,000 kilometers, the gas car is cheaper if you drive 3,000 kilometers. And there's your final answer. Okay, so let me try to zoom out here so you can see all of question D. So with that final answer there, that ends our class today. You have homework. You have two questions you did not solve on this page, right? You have question three and question four, and you have a practice worksheet on Google Classroom as well. Please, please, please come to class tomorrow for office hours if you don't understand or you have trouble with these word problems. 
Tomorrow is the only time I will go over it again because Thursday you have your practice test that you will start. Okay, so please come to office hours tomorrow if you do not understand or you have any questions about unit three. Okay, so let me just show you what the other page looks like. So you have question three and four on this one here. And the second page that you should have is this one here. And you'll notice it has practice problems. It has word problems. It asks you to solve substitution, elimination, and whatever method you want. And it has more application problems at the bottom. The questions are already on Google Classroom. The worksheets are already there. You just have to look at it. Okay. So that being said, that is the end of class today. So please, once again, come to class tomorrow at 11 a.m. If you have any questions, if it uh, if you have a problem with um, if you have a conflict with someone else's class, like some other teacher's class, uh, please let me know, like email me or comment like I have another class uh, tomorrow, uh, but I want to ask questions. Uh, I'll try to talk to the other teacher and try to work something out. All right. So that being said. Have a good rest of the day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow for whoever shows up. Peace out.